In case you're just tuning in this morning, I'm talking with Dr. Bruce Boros. Dr. Boros, before we went to the last break, you were just talking about acquiring the Knights of Columbus building on Northside Drive. Tell me about your experience there. It was very interesting. Uh, thank God for my surrogate father who's uh, built hundreds of hotels and churches and synagogues all around the world. Uh, once I was able to acquire the building, I now had at least 5,500 square feet and what we needed to do is convert it into medical space. Mm -hmm. And so dad came in and he is the type of guy who sets up scopes of work, timelines, uh, but he had never worked in Key West before. So uh, it was a, a wonderful to watch him corral everybody, get them in there and make them do their work. And, and we built that out uh, literally within uh, two and a half months. We had taken it from a, an empty hall and there was also a restaurant portion there. We had to take that out and then reconvert it. And everybody, everybody was so wonderful because so many of the people were patients of mine and they were very dedicated to getting me in. So we were able in 2003 to open the doors in literally three and a half months and start doing business. And at that point I decided um, that I was going to control my own destiny. And I felt it was very important to offer services to the community that were very high quality and were affordable. So I built a nuclear laboratory in the building. I had all sorts of cardiac ultrasound, vascular ultrasound. I actually started it as well having a chest pain center where people, if they had chest pain, would come to my center any day or Saturday and Sunday I stayed open and I had a nurse there. And we were able actually to work up people who had chest pain and determined very quickly were they having a heart cause or was it non-cardiac and 80 percent of people that go to the emergency room with chest pain it's not their heart but they wind up getting admitted because the doctors have to kind of CYA you know because it's a potentially litigious situation if they're wrong right so again a very high percentage of people who develop chest pain don't really warrant an admission, mm -hmm. okay, but there was no alternative. So right. they wound up going in, staying in for three or four days and having huge bills. Yeah. So at the time I crafted a chest pain center, I was able to rule out a heart attack, actually work people up in two and a half hours, do a treadmill or a stress echo and get them home mm -hmm. rather than hospitalizations. We were doing all sorts of really, really great stuff. I hired a nurse practitioner, I had two physician assistants working with me, I took on a neurologist who helped me as well, Dr. Schreiber, and I was building this really wonderful entity for people to come to and have an alternative. I was doing chest x-rays, I was doing blood work. Mm -hmm. It was one-stop shopping really for all of the lower keys and people who needed to have things done in a hurry. Say, let's say you, God forbid, you know, needed to have a fractured wrist uh, uh, set and you had three or four days. Uh, to get a clearance and you might have some cardiac problem. Well, the doc would call me up, I'd bring you in, I'd work you up, I'd do a stress test if needed, do a sonogram, and by the afternoon you were cleared for surgery. It wasn't a week waiting to get this test or that mm -hmm. test. And you know, so I, I'm very proud actually of, of what I had created. At one time I had 17 employees, um, but then the, uh, again the playing field shifted. I needed to get some additional support and help. It's hard to find a really competent, skilled, cardiologists who wanted to come to the Keys, Jenna. I mean, it was, you know, in years ago, this, you know, the, the thought of coming to Key West was very atrocious, really, to spouses. They, mm -hmm. you know, doctors' wives, where am I going to go shopping? Am I going to go to Ross <laughs> or Nordstrom's? True. You know, <laughs> and what about my kids? Will they get be a better than a fourth grade education, you know, and, and, and going through high school here? I mean, it's all some weird stuff. And, and doctors were making a lot of money before the cutbacks and, and reimbursement that occurred three or four years ago. So to get somebody down and you think, oh, they'd want to come to paradise from North Dakota. Right. Fact is, they were making a lot of money and they were staying put. And mm -hmm. I, it was just really hard to recruit a quality person. I had a couple of partners, didn't work out because I'm a real hard working person. And mm -hmm. my philosophy about patient care is the patients are platinum. And so it, that requires going the extra mile, calling you at 10 o'clock, saying, Jenna, I got your blood work back. I'm sorry I wasn't able to call you to now, but I didn't want to wait till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really great, great service. That's, that's where it's at. And um, so I built that out and 
it came, there came a time where again now a looming corporation was going to be my competition. And uh, I was approached by University of Miami and they had just bought uh, Cedars Hospital and they wanted to have a major stake in South Florida medicine and become a mecca. And uh, I was uh, approached by a very, very wonderful guy uh, who was uh, like the CEO of Medical Executive Affairs at that time. Mm -hmm. We talked about coming together. I was getting a little older. I was almost like 90, 91 years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, so ah. old. <laughs> <laughs> great plastic surgeon. So I said, uh, maybe I better think about exit strategy, but why not have a hospital that cares about doctors? Okay, mm -hmm. their mentality was doctor centric, not hospital centric. How much money can I make for a hospital versus how can we get a, a, a good relationship helping the doctor help the patients. Mm -hmm. So I made a switch from the previous location I'd been at for a while. They were having some issues. Uh, and then we wound up, um, I struck a deal with University of Miami to help me bring in doctors. Uh, I didn't want any micromanagement, mm -hmm. uh, but as things would turn out, um, because I've jumped around a little bit and we're running out of time on this segment, I wound up having some wrongful things done to me and um, I came back uh, from my son's graduation from NYU without a job. Mm -hmm. And um, as I've said in every statement I've made on Facebook, wherever, this community, because of our relationship and I in my fourth generation of conks, taking mm -hmm. care of that many you know, years and years, the community stood by me. And when I worked temporarily at a Dr. McAmal and Walker's office at night and on weekends to resurrect my practice and my, some of my people were able to come right away, I was there for a while working nights and weekends to keep my practice going. And then I procured the Pizza Hut building where I'm at now. But where we'll go in the last segment is I'm going back home. Um, I negotiated a settlement out with University of Miami for uh, our major, major differences in the way that uh, we I felt care should be rendered, and I wasn't going to give in even if I had to put my head on the chopping block, Good. and I did, and I uh, thank God for the support of the community mm -hmm. and my wife and my son and my friends who encouraged me to keep going mm -hmm. uh, from zero. I had mm -hmm. zero when I came back from my son's graduation. Well, you have risen, risen above everything, like Dr. The Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going anywhere yet. We're going to be right back after this commercial break, so please stay with us, everyone. <laughs> 